This conference will now be recorded. Okay. So in the previous class, we discussed about, you know, we started with test ng. So uh, we discussed about some basic features of test ng. So that's what our plan is like. As I told you, before you start working on it, you have to plan for it. Then only you can start working on it. So that's what we planned actually. We will be creating, you know, uh, say we are working on some banking project, ICICA Bank. Then we will be creating one class called money transfer. Inside that class, I will have my different test cases. Okay. So then I will be creating one class called loan. Inside this, I will have all my loan related test cases, home loan, personal loan, car loan. And I will be creating one, you know, class called user. I will, you know, registration user, some test cases. Okay. So this will be, you know, our, this was our plan. So according to that plan, we have to work. So that's what we actually did. We created, you know, uh, so what we did, uh, you know, we created that class called money transfer under that we created different test cases, NEFT, RTGS and all, right? And now how to tell you test ng that this is one of your test cases. Otherwise, you will not be considered. So each and every method you write in the test ng, you have to tell test ng what is this method represents. So I told these are my test cases that you can tell only by using the annotation called at the rate test. As soon as you write anything with at the rate test, test ng identifies that, okay, this is one of my test cases. I have created these five test cases and you know, we discussed about enabled false if you want to make something, you know, uh, you don't want to run some test cases at some particular point of time. You can group the things together. Say, I put it under regression group. I put it under regression as well as smoke testing. Uh, I put it under smoke testing regression. Uh, so this is the way I can just group my test cases. Okay. <clears throat> now, before running each and every test case, I want to run login to the application. So you have to use before method. So after running each and every test case, you want to log in, you have to run after method test case, same way before class, after class. All these things. As I told you, it's not mandatory for you. You have to use all these things. It's up to you what you can use, what you don't want to use. So same way, I created one more test cases called loan. There are three test cases, home loan, personal loan, and car loan. In this class, I have, you know, before class and after class. Here I am first opening the browser. I am verifying all the loan page. Or maybe I am going to that applying for that loan and trying uh, if whether user is able to apply or not. And then after class, I am quitting the browser. So as of now, here I am writing everything system.out.println. Basically, you have to write the code like here driver.quit, you know, driver.get, uh, web driver driver equal to new Firefox driver or Chrome driver, then driver.get, open the URL and all. Okay, we'll be writing it, don't worry. So this one, that's what we did. Also, we discussed about, you know, uh, assertion. We talked about what is soft assertion, what is hard assertion, and I have, you know, explained you the difference between. So this is a very strong class, you know, there are a lot of stuff, assert equals, assert true, it will check the condition is true or not, assert false, it will check the condition is false. If the condition is not false, if the condition is true in this case, that means it's failing then it will give you this error. In this case, I'm telling condition should be true. If it is true, it's fine. And you will get this message else it will. So same as soft assertion also I told you. Soft assertion, what the difference is? Hard assertion, as soon as it fails, it's going to stop your execution. It is not going to proceed. If it is fails at line number 21, hard assertion, that's it. It will stop its execution at line number 21. But soft assertion, your execution will not stop. You will continue to execute this class. You will continue to execute this class. Okay. It is not going to stop here. Then you, you can continue. And uh, But the issue was if there is any failure also, since it's continuing, it was showing me pass. But if what I want, I want it should throw me an error and it should be a failure. If for that you have to then assert all. 
can assert all means it will take all the assertion at the end of the day, whether, whether it is pass or fail. Okay. Guys, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, Abhishek, we can hear you. Okay, fine. Okay, so it will uh, send an error message. Okay, this is free at the end when the SR dot. So you can you know watch my previous class video. So all these things we have explained. Now today we are going to talk about code provider and. Hello, can you hear me now? Hello? Yes. Okay. So, these are the things we have discussed in our last class. So, today we are going to see what is data provider and what is the use of it. So, let me create a new class called, um, let's go user, for example. user i am creating one class called user here for example i want to create a method you know to registration a user so what i should write public void user registration right this is one of my test case so right at the rate test importing it from test engine now in this method what this method is trying to do maybe in this method i want to register a user i want to register say for example a couple of users so i need to pass the data to this method right and i want to register for example to register a user i need user id password, email ID, okay? With the help of those values, I can register a user. So I'll be using those U, P, and E inside the send case, right? We'll see all this. Pattern. We'll be using inside the send case. So here, as of now, I am just, you know, printing the values. User, password, email okay so this will take as an input argument and it is going to print all the values okay now <clears throat> from where it will take you can pass you can pass those values any outside file also xls file and you can read it whatever you started right how to read write an excel file same thing you can put it here okay that any other that if, that if it is required you can really do it and print it we have seen a couple of examples i told you also try out a couple of examples okay now if you want you can pass this from this class also you can create a method and you can pass those parameters okay you can create some method and pass those parameters for example public void maybe user data I'm creating 
public void use the data one more time so here you have to create some you know object array object maybe d d is nothing but data equal to new object two comma three so you know two comma three means from the array class i already discussed two comma three means two rows three columns means there are two sets of values each value is having uh, uh, sorry there are two sets of you know data each set is having three three values okay. two rows three columns means there are two sets of values right two rows means two sets of values and three columns means each set is having you know three three values maybe user id password and email this method is going to return type of this method will be object array so this method is going to return the things in terms of object array return d okay so this method the job of this method if this is not your test case this is not before class after class this the job of this method is to just to return the data okay just to provide the data whoever wants they can use it whoever wants this data they can just use this data that's it okay they can only use this data that's it so how to tell ki the job of this method is to provide the data for that you can write at the rate data provider sorry at the rate data provider d and p should be capital This conference will now be recorded. Now, so the job of this method is to provide the data. Okay, so you have to write data provider. So test, as I told you, for each and every method, you have to write some annotations. Otherwise, test engine can't figure it out. What is this method is? This is your test case or before class, before method, after class, after method, or what? So, uh, this method is not going to do anything. This method is going to only provide the data. Okay, this method is only going to provide the data. So the job of this method is to provide the data. Okay. So, <clears throat> so you have to write data provider. Now let's enter some data. So how to enter these things you know, D00 is the user one. D01. Say password one D zero two email one. This is one set of data. Let's enter another set of data D one zero equal to user two D one one equal to password two D one two equal to email to <clears throat> you want to equal to email to so there are two sets of data here okay now wherever you want you can use this data okay you can use this data okay so he is not going to do anything if somebody want he can call him now, for example, I want to call this. I want to call this data. I want to call this data provider in, in this method. Using this method, I can take the data. I can take the input argument from this data provider and I can, I want to execute this. So how to write? Here you have to write data provider equal to write the name 
user data. That means this method is going to take the data from here. You don't have to mention how many times you need to take and all. <clears throat> if there are two rows, you need to execute this two times with two sets of values. Each set you will take three, three values. And this will be considered as input argument of this method. If I run it, can you see two test cases? Why two test cases? Because there are two sets of data. User one, password one, email one, user two, password two, email two. If you go back here, here also you can see user registration twice. Okay. So testng.user is nothing but you know your class name. Testng is the package name, user is the class name. And this is two sets of data. Okay, so it's running twice. So if you go back here, and check the report also. Any report you check, so you can see two sets of data. Okay, here also if you go, can you see two sets of data? So two test cases. Okay, there is one class that I'll talk about it, timer and all this stuff. So this is the way, this is the use of data provider. That's how you can use the data provider. Okay, so the job of the data provider is only to provide the data, nothing else. Clear? Now, in some cases, maybe data provider might be under different class also. How to access it from another class? Okay, it might be present in different class. Now let me comment it out. For example, this is not here, this is not present here. This data provider is present in different class. For example, let me put it under here. Account statement class. Okay. Now, how can I access this data provider to this class, user class? Here, you have to give some name. Name equal to some name. Maybe hmm, Maybe I am giving registration data. Okay, syntax error. What is the name? Sorry, I forgot the syntax. Let me check. Name equal to correct on it. Oh, sorry, sorry. I wrote it in the wrong place. Name equal to user registration data. You have to give some name to this data provider. Okay, now you can access it any of the class. To access it in any of the class, for example, I want to access it here. So what to do? You can see it later. Let me write the things again. Okay, so to access it, you have to write, I will just copy. You have to write this. You have to write data provider class. What is your class name? A class name is this one, right? It's coming from this class. Account statement. So you have to write data provider class equal to account statement dot class data provider equal to the name of the data provider. What is the name? Name of the data provider is registration data. Copy. 
go back and that's it so if your data provider is in different class it doesn't mean key you have to write always in the same class okay it can be different class okay so in case in that case you have to write at the rate test data provider equal to account statement dot class data provider equal to you know give the name of this data provider now if you run it is going to run with the help of those values okay now it's not calling from here because i have commented it out okay so for your understanding what i will do i will put it here One 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 two one two. I just change the values, and if I run it, can you see one one and user one two password one two email one two. Okay, so this is how you can play around with data provider. Okay, the advantage of data provider is that like you are hard coding the values in your code so i mean you can you know use it from some outside xls file also or maybe you know you can write it in some property file also data provider um, but if you have you know some values say for example in gmo post web page you saw that you know we have to execute with different sets of uh, types of card maybe the card master card and you know so those values are constant in that page right you have to select different card there are three kinds of card american express master card and visa card you want to select different different card every time maybe you can use data provider in the data provider you can write the parameter different different class and you can read it and exit okay so data provider is one feature in test engine i just wanted to show you what is that Okay, if you want, you can use it or you can read from outside file also. Clear? Data provider, before class, after class, before method, after method, all this stuff. Okay. So now, uh, one more thing. Here I am writing system.out.println. If you write system.out.println, you can see the output in the console, right? If I run, I can see the output in the console. But you know, uh, output in the console is showing it's fine. But if you run, you know, multiple classes, so the console will get upgraded, or you will not be checking in console also. So instead of that, you can write instead of that, you can write reporter dot log and you can write it in print okay instead of system dot out dot print and you can write reporter dot log also carlon personal log Okay, reporter dot log. I mentioned it inside reporter dot log. So if I run it, <clears throat> see in the console you can see these three things only. Reporter dot log is not showing. This is coming from system dot out dot print error. So here you can see if you refresh the page. Okay, <clears throat> if you refresh the page. Here, chronological view, you can see the chronological view. Here, you can see different things. Ignore method, there is nothing. If I go to the reporter output, you can see. Applying for personal loan, applying for car loan, applying for home loan. So whatever you are writing, log files, all the logs you can see here. Okay, home loan, personal loan, car loan, everything you can see here. So, you can directly generate the log inside your report also. Don't have to you know, write it. Well, see here, you can see the message. Apply for car loan, apply for home loan, apply for personal loan, whatever you are writing in the reporter.log. 
okay so instead of using system dot output printer and this is one of the feature in test change you can just log report uh, you can just generate the log you can write the log files inside the report and you can go back and check also <clears throat> okay this is one of the another feature of test change so these are the different stuffs in test change okay so these are the different stuff in test change so how to generate you know before method after method before class after class data provider set the priority grouping your test cases using data provider you can read the data from the same class read the data provider from different class report on dot log and all this so the main thing is as i told you you have to plan and accordingly you have to proceed this was my plan earlier and this is what i have done it. clear till now any question clear for all <clears throat> you guys able to hear me clearly right yes abhishek okay so next is what i'm running i am opening this class and running it's perfectly fine i'm opening this class and running okay everything is running fine what is this okay on test kit and all i am my uh, thing is now how can i run everything in a batch mode right i am running one by one class now okay before i run in a batch mode what i will do one more thing i need to cover here for example my test case this imps is dependent on international money transfer IMPS is dependent on international money transfer. Just think about it. This test case is dependent on this. How to make the dependent? You can write comma. Depends on method equal to international money transfer. Methods. That means if this test case fails, this test case is not going to execute. But if you see the priority, the test case of priority of this test case is four. This is three. Okay, so this will execute first. If this fails, ideally this test case should not execute. Correct. To make it fail, how to make it fail? i can use assert class right in previous class we saw assert dot assert equals i am writing 3 comma 6 it is not equal to 6 it's going to fail and when you write by default it will import from j unit i have to import it from test engine So this is going to skip. If I run it, see the output. Four run, one failure, and one skip. Since I make this one as dependent on this, so this is showing this is failure, and this got skip. If you see the output here also, can you see? This two pass blue color. This is. Oh, this two pass green color. This is failed blue color. It's showing, and this is in yellow color. Yellow means skip. So what is the output? What it is saying? It's saying depends on do not do not successfully finished method. Depends on not successfully finished method. This is saying my depends on method did not finish successfully, and this is failed because expected risk but found. Here also, if you go and refresh, you can see the same thing. Can you see? Red color means it's failed. Yellow means it got skipped. These two paths. 
and you can four method one failed one skip two passes chronological view you can see the chronological view ignore method own account you saw earlier report output is nothing there are two groups registration and smoke one test and this is some temporary xml file i'll talk about it got it now in case i make this priority as three this is four now how it is going to work now you will tell me abhishek first this case test case will be running imps because the priority is three but you make imps depends on imd international money transfer so international money transfer will run later so how you will be knowing that international money transfer pass or fail right because i am running that test case first correct the thing is whenever you use depends on methods whenever you use depends on method that time it will not consider the priority at all always it will run imt first then imps okay if i write some test case dependent on some other test case you will come here you will see this annotation dependent on this international mind as well before running this itself you will come here you will run it then you will come back here. Can you see NEFT then RTGS then this method which got failed so it didn't execute transfer money transfer and you skip that test case. Okay, if I refresh, same thing you can see. Okay, this is how you can. If I refresh here, also you can see that. two pass, one skip, one fail. These are the details. So the details it will. Okay. So depends on method. If you use, it will not consider the priority. Now all these things I did. Next is what I need to run all the test cases batch mode together right i cannot sit and click one by one class ultimately you have to run everything in a batch mode how to run in a batch mode if you see my previous class video <clears throat> okay we mentioned how to install test engine and all how to create test engine.xml file remember while creating test engine classes we have to give the xml file name correct right click new testing class next here we are giving the class name here we have mentioned some xml file name so we mentioned testing.xml all right so we can use that xml file to run our stuff where is this xml this xml is here it's better to put it under your project So <clears throat> I'm refreshing it. It can be anywhere, no issues, but it's better. Here, see that testing XML. Here, there will be some sweet name. Give any sweet name. Say I C I C I Bank Suite. Okay. This is what you are doing. I C S A Bank Suite. Now here. There is something called test. Test is nothing but you know, like module. Okay, in the XML, whatever the tag you are starting, you have to close this tag. See this tag I am starting, I am closing. I am starting suite, I am closing. This is also like you know your DOM structure. Classes I am starting, classes you have to close. Inside that you have to write different class. So first there will be suite. See here is suite, here is end. Inside suite, there will be different test. See, this test is not at the read test. At the read test is nothing but your test cases. That is your method. This test you can say your module, different, different module. 
For example, this module name I am giving. <coughs> money money transfer this module this module name i am giving registration and loan loan related okay so i can give different different module name okay two module name cannot be same otherwise you will get an error message under different module there will be different different class to write the class, you have to write the classes tag. Inside the classes tag, there will be class. So how to write the class name? You have to write the package name dot class name. So my package name is man um, test ng, right? We created a package here. Test ng. Here it is. Huh? Under test ng package, I have different different class. So let me put under first module this. Stng dot money transfer under second module stng dot loan and maybe one more set stng dot user okay so this is up to you how you want to plan so i have two module one is money transfer here i put all the money transfer related test cases or all the money transfer related class so I can put only one class. You can put any number of class, no issues. It should be under classes tag. Under classes tag, you have to write class name equal to this. If you have multiple classes, you can put one more class. So this is one module. This is called test. There is one more module. This is called um, registration and you know uh, loan related. This is money transfer related. So first is suite. Under suite, there will be different test. Under test, there will be different classes. Inside the class, I will have different methods and all. <clears throat> so, if I want to, if you want to run everything in a batch mode, ideally you have to run this XML file. Let me run this XML and see. Can you see now total? Total nine run, one failure, one skip. Total nine test cases, right? Under this, there are four test cases. Here, there are three. Four plus three, seven. Here, there are two. User registration I am running with two sets of data. Seven plus two, nine. So, total nine test cases. Under that, one failure. So, this one is failing. And this one will skip. If this fails, so I can see the output. Total nine, one failure, one got skipped. And here you can see. See for first test cases, it's showing open browser at the end. It's showing quit Firefox in between, before method, method after method, and all this stuff. After that, it ran user test cases. After that, it ran loan again in the loan class before running. It's executed before class and after class. In between, it's executing all the method within it's executing all the method so here if you go you can see the same thing here okay you can see those stuff so this is my suite icsa bank under that money transfer registration and loan under registration and loan you can see you know user and loan these two class under loan you can see home loan car loan personal loan here also user Registration with two sets of values. And under money transfer, you can see, you know, NEFT, RTGS, IMT is failing. And so it is in blue color and IMPS is got skipped. If I go back here and refresh, same thing you can see. Can you see money transfer is this one? This is registration and loan. Okay, in this page, you can see. See, when I run the parameter, you can see the parameter values here. You can see the message for home loan because I use reporter.output. And here is the failure analysis and all. Same way here, if I go and refresh, you can see the updated report. 
Can you see? This is fail, this is skip, and this is pass. And here it's showing testng.monitor, testng.user, testng.loan. Chronological view, if I go, you can see the correct way how it is running basically. Money transfer first open Firefox, close Firefox. In between, login, logout, login, logout, login, logout. Then this one. Then open Firefox, close Firefox. Car loan, home loan, personal loan. Okay. Same you go to ignore method. This method is ignored from this class. A report output, you can see the report output, whatever we are generating, report dot log times, you know, how much time each test case took. Groups, two groups. See, there are two groups. One is regression, one is smoke. Under regression group, this test case, under smoke, this. Two tests now. Can you see? One is money transfer, one is registration and loan. Under money transfer, there is one class. Under money transfer, uh, here it is. Under money transfer, there is one class now. Money transfer group test. Okay, so give me some different name. Hmm. I go back and refresh. So two groups, empty group, there is one class. Another group is registration and login loan. There are two classes. That's why it's showing two classes. Now here, see, Selenia. Now see the XML file path. It's pointing to my XML file because I'm running it. Say Selenium project workspace. You know, July weekend weekday testing.xml. Now I'm running this XML. This is present under this location. Workspace. Selenium July weekday. XML testing.xml. Okay, this is how we can run in a batch mode. Yes. Now, here I have created some group, right? You guys ask me what is the use of this group. If you want, I can run on some particular group at some particular point of time. For example, these two falls under registration. This is smoke. This is also smoke. Okay, let's not make it fail. If I don't want to make it fail. Go and run it. All the nine test cases, it's going to run, and everything will pass and all. See nine, nine, nine. Okay, I'll go and refresh. It's running all the nine. If I want, I can tell you know. I want to run only. Say, regression test cases. I want to run only regression test cases. So it's nothing, you just need to add one tag, which group you need to run. I'm copying it because you know you need to give the tag name correctly. This is the way you can write. What you can write? Groups. You can say run, which one you want it to run. You have to Use the run tag, you have to end the run tag. And you have to write include name. Which one? Only registration. From this test, it is going to run only registration. If there are any group, it is going to run only registration group. It is not going to run other group for this test. In this test, there is only one class. So it is going to run only registration. I'm saving it and running it. Can you see now? Eight. See NEFT, RTGS, International Money Transfer. NEFT, RTGS. IMPS is not running, but it run international money transfer also because this also falls under registration group. So this is the use of the group. You can grouping your test case while running and you can tell. You don't want to run everything always. 
you need to decide which one you can run which one you cannot Clear? Any question? Any doubt? So this is how grouping works. Okay. okay. So that is how you can run your test cases in a group mode and do all this stuff. So let me make it. So if I see some failure, it will be you know, nice to see. I'll run it. I can see different report. Eight, one test case, zero skip. Why zero skip this time? Why it is not skip showing one? Because I'm telling run only this group and the test cases which you have, you know, got skipped. That is under different group smoke. So it is not showing at all. Because I told not to run the smoke test cases. So there is no dependency right now. Okay. So that's how it is. This is the way you can. Comment the things. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. This is what is test ng how you can run in a group and all. Clear? Any question? Any doubt till now? Hmm? <clears throat> Any question, any doubt till now? Mm, no questions as of now, Abhishek. Sir? <clears throat> okay. That's it. What is testing? So, from the test engine, what is so? Okay, one second. So, uh, okay. So when we are creating the test ng class, you saw two more annotations, right? Before test, after test, before suite and after suite. So where it is going to run? When it is going to run? Before test, is means nothing but it means this test so try to understand so our structure is something like this there are different different test cases so consider these all are my test cases okay These all are my test cases. Every test cases, you know, falls under some class. For example, under this class, this is one 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 class, right? That's what we saw. Under each and every class, there are different, different at the rate test, which is nothing but method, different methods. <laughs> now, Mm, there is something called test or module under test there will be different class right that's what we saw that you can do in the test ng right so for example this is one test or module under that there are two class 
this is one tester module under that there are two class this is one tester module under that there is one class so under one module there can be one class or multiple class outside all the test there is something called suite right that's the structure here you can see it first is suite under suite there will be different different test money transfer registration and loan which is nothing but module so blue color ones are the test okay under test there will be different class there can be one class more class okay so under this test there is one class money transfer under this class there are two classes user and loan under the classes there are different test cases so in any class when you write before class and after class it is going to take care only for only while running this class not for the other class if i write inside this class before method and after method while running this two method only it will call this two method it will not call running the this method this before method and after method will call only for these two cases because i wrote these two things inside this class it is not going to affect other classes in other other test cases in other classes okay so this is before method after method and before class after class is going to take care only for that particular class if i write it here before class after class it is going to take care only while running this class there is something called before test and after test before test and after test so when these things are going to run before test and after test before test and after test is going to run before running this test and after running this test or before running this test maybe this is test one this is test two this is test three so here you have to write for example i want to run something before running the test one and after running the test one you can write inside this class or this class any one of the class before test and after test means i mean to say whatever the classes is present inside this test you can run inside any of the class okay you can run inside any of the class so if you run inside say inside this class before test and after test so while running the test one it will call before test and while after run finishing everything in test one it will call after test but before running test two and test three this will not considered because you wrote it under some class which is present under test one only here if i write before test and after test say under user class it will take care only running this test it is not going to run before running this empty because i wrote m i wrote it under this class user which is present under second module it will take care only running this test and there is something called before suite after suite so everything comes under the suite right you can write it under any class okay so let's write it for example so let's not make it fail let's make it pass so that we can think for example under loan i am writing before test and after test like before class and after class before set test i'll just import it after test so what i can write so for example open database connection close database connection open db connection quit db something i'm just typing db connection after this so i wrote it inside the loan right loan where it is present go back here and check loan is present in this test 
So before running this test, it is going to run OpenDB. After running this test, it is going to run ClosedDB. If I run it, okay, I'll do one thing. Uh, <clears throat> I'll put something test dash. It will be easy for us to identify. I'll go back and run. Here it's running before class and here it's running after class in between before method after method before method after method all the method now <clears throat> I am running second test right loan and registration before running it found that under user class there is something called before test and after test so can you see it's first run before test open DB connection at the end it ran after test in between it ran this user user one and user two right these two test cases then loan test cases it goes to the loan class and it's running loan but inside loan class i have before class and after class right so it's run first before class at the end it run after class in between apply your card loan home loan personal loan. if there are before method after method it should have run those things okay so you can run inside any class <clears throat> if you go and refresh it only in chronological view you can see it properly open firefox login logout login logout close firefox and see before running first it's calling open db from the loan class then it's running user then it's running loan class at the end close db can you see same way there is something called before suite after suite so all these classes falls under the same suite, right? I say say bank suite. You can write it inside any class. So here you can say I say say bank. Here also you can see the thing. I say say bank. So just write before class, before suite, after suite inside any class, wherever you want. I can write it here also. I can write it anywhere else. Because all these things come under the suite. Before suite. After suite. So what should I write? Maybe. Um, here I can write maybe open selenium, open selenium, quit selenium. Close selenium, something. Okay. So you'll see before running everything, it is going to run before selenium after running everything it is going to run after selenium saving it going back here and running it see quit selenium at the end and open selenium at the beginning in between all this stuff before class before after class before method after method before test after test depending on the situation okay so this is how the test in you open selenium at the beginning close selenium at the end in between different class before suite after suite before method after method and all this stuff. this is what is test in you. clear any question no question Abhishek, just a simple mm -hmm. question. Uh, the name of the test what we have written in XML file, mm -hmm. like is equals to uh, registration and this is user defined, right? We are giving for uh, the sake of uh, understanding that under this test classes. Yes, exactly. exactly. Everything. Okay. Everything. Okay. Not only that uh, test name. Even the you can see the suite name also. You can give. You know. Yeah. A class name. Any you are giving. So test name. Mm. 
everything you can yeah. Yeah, because class name will be whatever classes we have defined, and under which uh, file or source it is, like test ng dot monitor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? And this file will be uh, utilized for running test cases in batch, right? Directly, we will use yes. this uh, XML file to start our. We will be using directly this XML. Okay. Okay.